God's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Oh, God's turned my morning into dancing again. And it's lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Dun, 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 dun. Where the once was only pain, Jesus came and comforted me. Where the once was only hurt, He came like a friend. I feel the bright and morning star. Healing my darkness I feel his love and gentleness Surround me daily yeah. He's turned my morning Into dancing again He's lifted my sorrows I can't stay silent I must sing for Cause joy has come Come on! Oh, God's turned my morning into dancing again. Yes, it's lifted my sorrows. I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Yay! Thank you, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a chapter a day, your favorite program, a cat for sure, with your favorite girlfriend, squeezing with your heart and laughter. <laughs> I'm so sorry, so, so sorry, people. Yesterday, I had to tell you guys that we're going to come way, way early today. But the lines kept shutting out. Internet kept going on and off. Like, it was not very stable. The network was not stable. And by the time I got back on to finish the program, it just slipped my mind that I was supposed to tell you guys that we're going to get this earlier today. But all the same, for those who will be coming, whenever you come, you're going to see this version, so you're going to watch it. Okay, so I'm really, really sorry. We have a birthday. One of my friends, her page, um, her organization is having a birthday and I'm the one who is going to host her on that page. I really, really forgot, people. It's Grow With Katie. You can search it on. You go to my wall. You're still going to see it there. I'll, of course, share the live when the time comes so that we all can go there and celebrate with her. She's doing a great job. She's blessing lives. She's empowering women, giving voice to the voiceless. And it's a beautiful thing. So we need to come together and mass and celebrate with her and get to make people know about all that she's doing. So I'm the one who is going to host her on the show. I just didn't remember to tell you guys. You all should forgive me, okay? I'm very sorry. I'm truly sorry from the bottom of my heart. So that's why we're doing a chapter I did this early. And um, it, it's better we do it than go for the birthday hosting and then it takes longer than we expected and then we're not able to get done with everything that we're supposed to do. That would really be bad. So I don't want us to miss a chapter a day and that's why I decided to do it early. So let's get on. We'll always hand over the session to God. After handing over the session to God, we do the Bible, the birthday party, and then we get on to the Bible party. The Bible party has to do with um, what we're doing today, which is 1 Samuel chapter 11, and he has 15 verses. This is quite a short read. Um, our Bible party is from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 11, and he has 15 verses. And today we have to do the birthday, people. It's 29th of May. Let's get to find out those who are in the birthday book. But before then, let's hand over the session to God. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. You've made me rejoice and be glad in you. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tenderness. We thank you for all the amazing things that you've done in our lives. You're doing and you're still to do, Lord. There's none like you in all the earth. We bless your holy name for protection, for forgiveness, for guidance, for all the amazing things that you keep doing. For giving us a beautiful day such as this, giving us health. Making it possible for us to be gathered here again in your presence to dine and sup. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone. That will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day today. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So, people, it's time. Let's get ready. Birthday party first and then 
Bible party. Hey. Birthday party first in Bible party. Okay, so my pen doesn't want to write. I don't know why. Okay, so let's go. Birthday party time. Are you ready? Welcome, Mr. Mac Marcus. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of this. Please don't forget to share us out so that a lot more people can come on here and we get started the word of God together and get blessed together. We need to share the blessings. Today is Sunday, so I'm sure you all had a lot that you learned from church. We can be able to share that too. Why not? Someone might get blessed by what was preached in your service today and it might really be a blessing to someone out there. Okay, so let's go. Today is the 29th of February of May. <laughs> and the first person we have on our birthday book is Mamdu Komando. Mamdu Komando, welcome, Mr. Edison Martins. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Please don't forget to share us out. Share, 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 and share, share as much as you can. If possible, you can create a watch party as well so that your friends can join and we all get blessed together. We get to bless each other, basically. So Mam Du Commando, I got to know her through um, one of my dads. I had lots and lots of dads. I got to know her one of, through one of my dads, but this is like my real dad. I got to know her through one of my dads. He's the, so Bizika is like my young auntie. Yes, because it's my dad's sister. So she loves God. She serves God with a passion. She can also sing. Well, it's a thing in our family, I guess. We, we can sing. We love music. So we love singing too. She can also sing very well. Happy birthday to you, Mam Do Commando. And then the next person is Mam Aritz Asi. Mam Aritz Asi, I actually got to know her on Facebook and she has a very um, great group, um, something Nigeria, Nigeria. Um, I've forgotten the name of the group, but she's, uh, she's the um, founder of that group and she gets to help you spread and tell people about what you do who you are and you post stuff there it's basically about people selling themselves and all that you know and uh, i remember her encouraging me to do that to share my stuff on there and everything and i was really grateful and since then i've been following them sometimes they go live sometimes they talk on topics that can help you you know, sometimes they do promos and stuff like that on the page. It's really, really beautiful. You need to join and, and go there and, you know, you just never know. You never know where your audience might be. One person might be that client that will link you to thousands and thousands of clients. So no place is ever small. No connection is not ever small because it's a line of connections. So thank you, Mam Arit Asi, for being an amazing person. And then the next person is Mam Adeline Sere. Okay, Mama Deli said hey, we also met on social media. I just liked what she was doing on there, the post she was making, and even some of the comments she was making on people's posts as well. And so I saw it and it was really amazing and I decided to connect with her and it has been beautiful so far. God bless you, ma'am. And then the next person is Mr. Kingsley Pentiagma. Mr. Kingsley Pentiagma, we actually were classmates in GBHS by Mander and I think at the university as well we went to the same university I kind of get mixed up because a lot of people left from um, when we left high school some people went to University of Yaoundé and the rest of us went to University of Boya so sometimes I get mixed up with who was in Boya and who was in Yaoundé because we kind of still met once in a while Yaoundé people come to Boya Boya people go to Yaoundé and stuff like that so I'm not so sure but for sure, we were actually classmates in GBHS Bamenda, right, Mr. Kingsley? He's going to deal with me if that's not true. <laughs> but I think so. I believe so. So it's not someone that we've just met but on social media. No, we've met physically, we've spoken, we've actually sat in the same class together, studied together and all that. He's a nice person, tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also very fun to talk to never a dull moment with him we kind of separated after the university i guess and then life brought us back again to connect on social media so we reconnected again on social media and he's been an amazing person so far the next person is mr julius aka julio pepe <laughs> we're also in high school together he's also one of those people that 
gets to bring all the vibes and all the fun to the environment and um he was kind of strict but funny he was kind of um very very um responsible and respectful and uh what else the guys were always like kind of to themselves basically but i had some friends who were guys so like majority of my friends are guys so i was kind of amongst them for the most part as opposed to being among girls my mom used to be so worried about it but she said that was how my dad was my dad's most of my dad's friends were ladies <laughs> so most of my friends are guys it's just funny like that yeah so um i kind of was always around the guys with the guys and all that um but i was not a uh, i was not a tomboy no 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 nada i was not a tomboy i was a girl like a girl i've always been a girl i've always loved being a girl no at no point have i desired to be a boy not even for one second if i come to this earth again i want to be a girl again i love the pursuing when they're pursuing you i love it i love to be pampered i love to be spoiled in a nice way though so i love being a girl i've never complained about it okay so happy birthday to all these people happy birthday to mom do commando happy birthday to mom aritz asi happy birthday to mom adeline seke Sede, happy birthday to Mr. Kingsley Pentiagma. Happy birthday to Mr. Julius, aka Julio Pepe. Happy Sunday, Mr. Chair Alves. Thank you for being an amazing friend. Thank you for being an amazing brother. Please don't forget to share us out. Share, 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 so that a lot more people can come on here and let's get blessed. So we're going to pray for the birthday people. After we're done praying for them, then we're going to do the Bible party. And like I said, I'm really sorry. Yesterday, the network was so bad, and we're trying to figure out how to get... Um, to to do the the live stream and by the time i was done doing it oh my god i forgot i totally i totally i completely forgot that i was supposed to um how they say that again i was supposed to tell you guys that today we're going to come on earlier so i'm really really sorry please you all should forgive me um you can do a, a rebroadcast you can watch it later for those who will be coming on later they can watch it later but I know that there are some people who like to be here live so that they can give their contributions live and we can read it out and we can give them shout outs. I'm really, really sorry. You all should have to forgive me. So let's pray for the birthday people and get on with the Bible party. I know some of you have already been to church. So, of course, I'm hoping that the Bible party today, you all are going to be giving us some tips and tidbits of how your service was, what you learned and everything. And like I said, today, our Bible party is taken from the book of First Samuel chapter 11 and he has 15 verses it's quite a short read so i'm sure everybody is going to be here and we're going to do this together in grand style are you ready let's pray for the people first father we thank you for adding a new year to the lives of these amazing people who are born today lord we pray oh god that you're going to take them to levels and places that they can never even even fathom in their wildest imagination cause them to be trailblazers space setters and world changers in the mighty name of jesus lord open doors for them that no man can open and shut every door that's not of you divinely connect them to people that are good and will cause them to get to their best level to be their best and be their best version and take them to the next level and disconnect them divinely from people and things that will cause them to stagnate and not progress father i pray oh god that you're going to teach them how to do your will you're going to teach them how to abide in you oh father you're going to teach them oh lord how to get to the top and stay there permanently because you're the master strategy and you're the greatest teacher so lord teach them how not only to get to the top but to get there and stay there permanently lord we pray oh god that you're going to open doors for them you're going to give opportunities to them oh lord that will cause them to shine and stand bright that they will stand out though not fit in oh lord because they were born to stand out and not to fit in father i pray that as a fulfilled purpose when they get to that place where they feel overwhelmed they feel tired they feel like they want to give up or back out lord you are going to speak to them in a loud clear voice and say this is the way walk that we need and because they will know the way they'll walk straight and walk on the part they will not derail they will not go aside they will stay on course and fulfill purpose to the glory of your name thank you king of glory because i know you always hear and answer in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving father i pray oh god that money is going to make money in their pockets blessings will make blessings in their lives you perfect all that concerns them 
give them a sound 126 state a state of continuous laughter singing rejoicing and if you tarry to come same time next year they'll be here giving live testimonies of all the amazing things that you've done in their lives and the reason why they sing and why they dance and why they rejoice oh god father we just bless your holy name we magnify you because you deserve it thank you lord because you're great your goodness your faithfulness your loving kindness and your tender mercies are forever and ever father we pray this day oh lord that you're going to open your eyes to see those they're supposed to be destiny helpers to and also open the eyes of their destiny helpers to be strategically positioned so that when these people cry out for help help is going to be available as much as when the people there are supposed to be destiny helpers to cry out for help help is also going to be available for them thank you lord cause them to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day oh lord let their gifts make a way for them causing them to stand before kings not before mean men and lord i pray that you bless them on every side oh god do for them even those things that they don't know they need because you are god who understands our needs you're god who knows what we need even the things we're always running towards, we're running for. You know that we need those things, so you're going to provide it for us. So, Lord, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. We salute your majesty because you deserve it. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen and amen. We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus. Knowing that you've done it, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. You still the prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. As we pray. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed, Amen. Let it be in the life. Amen, people. So let's get on. Let's get on. Let's get on. It is Bible party time. Ready or not, here I come. First Samuel chapter eleven. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead, and all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel. And then, if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What ailed the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a yoke of oxen, and hewed them in pieces, and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell upon the people, and they came out with one consent. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Judah thirty thousand. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and shewed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall he say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and shewed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemed good unto you. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the hosts in the morning watch, and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. 
And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered, so that two of them were not left together. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men, that we may put them to death. And Saul said, there shall not a man be put to death this day, for to the Lord had wrought salvation in Israel. Then Samuel then said Samuel to the people, Come and let us go to Gilgar and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgar, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgar. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of the Israel rejoiced greatly and all the people went to Gilgar and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgar and there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord and there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly this is the word of the Lord and all the saints shall say thanks be to God okay that's a short one that's a short one and uh, it's actually interesting because who would you go and look for help to you know sometimes when people minimize you God brings a situation or a scenario to make people to respect you you know and I like the fact that Saul actually redirected them to God because <clears throat> they had said that they should bring the people that were um, um, they were laughing at him they were mocking him they wanted to bring the people and deal with them because they said Saul was not able to lead them. So now Saul has been able to lead them and defeat a, a whole, the, all of the Ammonites and all that. So they had to punish those people who didn't believe in Saul. <laughs> oh my God. It is that bad. It is that serious. When you don't believe in people, there are consequences and grievous consequences. Well, this day, Saul was probably in a good mood. And the nice thing was he was directing them to God. He says that it's not about him. It's not by his power that he won those people. It's God who gave him victory. So it's God's victory. So they're not going to be killing nobody because they didn't believe in him. Sometimes, yeah, God will actually favor us like that. And as he's favoring us, some people might get into trouble for the favor that he favors us. So you are the person. Who are you? Whose side are you on? Who do you believe? Do you believe God? Do you believe that God's word is true? What God has said to you will come to pass. Do you believe that? Well, I don't know about you, but trust me, when God says a thing and you hold on to it till the end, it will definitely come to pass. So these people, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so these people actually needed help. They, they actually needed help and they wanted to go and make a covenant with um, the Ammonites so that the Ammonites were going to help them. And all that and then the Ammonites give them some really weird conditions who does that like what what makes you think that by plucking off my eyes I won't die already I'm coming to you for help and then you're giving me some kind of help that is not help and that's how some people are in our lives we have some of these people in our lives who are pretending that they want to help you but they're not really helping you like I said I saw a certain um, um, picture some time ago and it was so real the picture was so on point where there was a man who was at the top of the at the top of the 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 place so there's a hole there's a deep hole like a ditch and then there there are two sides so you can be on this side or on this other side and then there's a ditch in the middle so it shows that his friend has fallen into the ditch and then he's up so he's lying down and sending his hand into the ditch like he wants to help his friend meanwhile just close to him there's a ladder it was a rope i can't remember but one of the two either of them whether it was a rope or a ladder he could actually he could actually tie it and tie it to something and then send it to his friend to pull his friend up no but he was there sending his hand and then the friend was also trying to send his hand and trying all options it was not working because they, their hands were too short to reach each other so the friend will be inside there inside the ditch and thinking oh this my friend really loves me look at him sitting here and struggling to get me out of this place the the stupidity in that whole thing is that even the one who is sitting up there and putting his hand in the dish and pretending like you two, you're not doing nothing. Your life is not going anywhere. You're also stagnant. You're staying on that position. Ain't that stupid? So you prefer to be on one spot with your friend because you don't want them to progress because you don't want to help them. Seriously, by not helping them, you're also putting yourself in a dangerous situation. You're not moving. 
as you're sitting there and putting your hand constantly, you're also not doing anything for yourself. You're also not doing anything for yourself. And if the sun is scorching, it's also going to be scorching you. And even you worse, because in the ditch, there's some level of intensity of the sun, of the heat reaching. But you that you're at the top, the heat is reaching you much more. So don't you think you're suffering more? Like, it's just terrible. Someone is coming to you for help. You, if, if you don't want to help the person, it's okay to just say, I'm not going to help you. Than to say you help them and then give them some stupid and weird conditions that they should pluck off their eyes. What kind of stupid condition is that? We have some of those friends in our lives. They are pretending that they want to help us, but they're not helping us. They'll see opportunities that are great opportunities. They cannot do it, but they know that you can do it. They will not give it to you. They will not tell you. They will not they only be making, oh, it is well, it is well. They want you to be coming to them all the time so that you should be giving them urgent 2K, urgent 2K. And then later, but instead of giving them an opportunity that they can actually get to, to, to be able to fend for themselves, teach them how to fish, not teaching them how to fish, not giving them fish all the time because you can actually teach them. You don't want to teach them. You only want to be the one, like you want to be the igwe, igwe. Of everything let everybody be looking up to you nobody should be looking up to you we should be looking up to Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith and that's the truth because the arm of flesh will fail us even some of these people who claim to be helping us sometimes the bad part as well is that when these people help you they will not want to walk on you it's like they will just trample on you you're supposed to lay on the floor so that they should be walking on you no you is helping. It's God who has given you the ability to be able to help. So don't take it for granted. And don't take it and bully people. Don't take your, your, your authority. God is giving us authority to be able to help people, not to bully people. Not to maltreat people with it. Some of us, we don't want to help anybody. We're pretending. We're lying that we're helping these people. But we're not helping them at all. In our hearts of hearts, we know we're not helping them. And we know we don't want to help them. It's just best you tell that person that I can't help you. I can't be of assistance. I can't help you. So that the person can even have an opportunity to go looking for help for some, from somewhere else. Than to be depending and trusting in you and then you're failing them consistently. And then the people now come out like, oh, there's no trust. You can't trust somebody in this life and everything. You can trust people, but you just trusted the wrong person. And most of all, you can trust God. God never fails. Man can fail you. The arm of flesh will fail you. But God will never, ever fail you. Who is that? <laughs> Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Happy ages. Happy new year. Happy new month. Happy new week. Happy everything. No, I have to use it because the thing that those people are doing is very stupid. It is totally and completely stupid and senseless. You cannot be pretending to help somebody when you're not truly helping them. It, it makes no sense at all. It is daft. You can't be doing that. It's not correct. So yes, let them hear and know that it's totally and completely stupid. So these people do all these things and they'll tell you, somebody comes to you and says they want you to help them and you say that they should all, you trust their rights out. Ha! Huh? Like, trust their right eyes out. Like, who does that? What kind of help is that that you want to give people? Just because you want to um, protect them. They're a small country and they know that people can come and fight them and, and, and destroy them and all that kind of stuff. And they come to you for help and then you tell them that you trust their eyes out, their right eyes out. What kind of thing is that? Like, don't just help me. Just tell me that you don't want to help me. It's simple. Let me go to the next place and look for help quietly. And you know, like, it's just not funny. It's not funny. And so these people said, okay, let's, um, listen, we've listened to your condition. Give us a number of days. Let's go and figure out whether we're going to be able to <laughs> come to terms with the fact that we have to lose our right eyes so that we can be protected from not dying, from not being killed by another nation or from not being taken over by another nation. Let's go and try out and see if that's going to work for us. And so these people go and they go now and start looking for help from other places. And sometimes I kind of feel like uh, God will make those things happen so that you should not waste your time on those people that will truly not help you. And then you go to people that will really help you because 
maybe if these people kept on begging maybe they would have continued begging and saying oh please please you guys should really help us now just help us you you have to help us they might destroy us please you have to help us you know instead of taking that time god just makes these people to give them one weird condition and then they move to the next place to go and look for help and then they finally meet people who are ready to help them people who are willing to help them and basically i would say that sometimes it's like this in our minds we have the kind of people who believe can help us until those people fail us then we know that god might be showing you that oh this person this is where your help is going to come from this is the person i want to use to help you this is the person i want to use to do something great in your life but you have a person that you already have at the back of your mind i always give this option of people because it's mostly abroad people and and people are, um people are, people overseas and people in the country so for example a lot of us africans when we travel abroad we kind of have this thing of wanting to take care of family and supporting our family we know where we came from so we don't take it lightly we come here and we hustle we focus because we want to support our families and everything and then um sometimes it feels like okay since this person is the one who su 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 supports the family basically every time you just go to the person so you have a project and you want to do the project and in your mind you just have it at the back of your mind that when you come and tell this person the person is going to give you the money but maybe god doesn't want to use that person to give you that money may yes he might want you to do the project all right but he might not want to use your sister or your brother so your focus is on your sister and your brother and whoever god is showing you that is supposed to be the one to help you you're not looking at that person because you feel it's supposed to be your brother or sister then maybe when you've gotten to your brother or sister now they give you one weird condition for being able to support you or to or to give you money for that business and you'll be like huh okay i give up and then now your eyes will be open to see that person that god has told you that this is supposed to be the person that will support you this is the supposed to be the person that will push this thing forward will be able to get up to go forward so we when we're going to god we have to go with an open mind we don't have to have our already made answers in our head because when we do that we'll not be able to hear god we'll not be able to hear what god is telling us at that time we'll not be able to hear that Oh, don't focus on this person. Don't focus on that person. This is the person that I'm going to use instead. Sometimes some people that God will use in our lives to help us or to push us forward will not look like it at all. Oh, yes, will not look like it. And if we're the people who are looking down on people will miss that blessing. Why am I saying so? Imagine, um, imagine the children of Israel. Imagine, um, sorry, people imagine imagine that um you have this um brother or sister and the person is really high end like high up there and you're expecting that they'll just give you like 50k and then something automatically just happens to them and they don't have money they you know how these things happen they just go bankrupt or something what would you do what would you do your help can come from anywhere when god is bound when god is ready to help you when god is ready to do the thing that he wants to do in your life he's going to use any and anybody every and anybody the bible says that he can give nations for your sake so he will do anything just imagine naaman naaman was a commander in chief but he had wahala who helped him a slave girl imagine he was saying who are you to who are you to even talk talk less of your giving advice until you're telling me that i should take the advice like who are you? He didn't despise her. And that's how he got his healing. So sometimes we have these particular ways that um, we, we want to get some things from God. We are asking for things from God. And we already have particular ways in our minds that we want to happen. And then it's not happening and we're getting irritated. We're getting irritated because those ways are not the ways God wants to do it for us. Yes, that's not how God wants to do it. He has his way that he wants to do it for you. And until you come to terms with the fact that this is the way God wants to do it for you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We need to come to terms with God's ways. Welcome, Mr. Isaac Boboskai. Welcome, 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 Mr. Ampoma Isaac Boboskai. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Oh, yeah. 
So we have to get to terms with, with the ways of God. Sometimes he will give us a hard time in the place that we're too focused at so that we'll be able to now redirect our focus to the right place. The Bible says that let our focus be on Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the perfect example. I said that when you're doing something in life, even it's good to have role models and all that, people you follow and all that. But when it comes to a place where the thing that that person you're following is saying is contradicting the Bible, Jesus is now the perfect example. Because some people as human beings who might follow God and follow God and reach to a place and we miss it. I might have been preaching the undiluted word of God from start till I get to a point and I miss it. I am human. It's just possible. Lots of factors could contribute to the reason why I will miss it. And so if you're using me as your focus and your yardstick, you would also miss it. But the Bible has told us expressly clear that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. So he's the author and finisher of our faith. So let's focus on him. Let's set on him. Let's set our gaze on him. Let us look up to the hills from when comes our help. It is only from the Lord. It is from the Lord. It is from the Lord only. And then these people now left um, the, 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 the Nahash. These people now left Nahash and said, okay, they should go now to um, Saul's people and go and complain and say what is going on. And then they went to Saul's people and Saul decided to support them. Saul decided to support them and he made everybody to go all out and support there's some times that you'll be in your comfort zone and they would have to push you to do what you have to do. Uh, me, I'm that kind of comfort zone person. Sometimes I kind of easily just slip into my comfort zone and then uh, God is going to do and undo and bring me out. <laughs> he doesn't smile when he's doing it. Uh, he brings me out with power, with full force and vigor. Oh my God. Sometimes it's so painful, but it's the best ever. I won't. I wouldn't lie to you all. It's the best ever. I get to be shocked about the things that I can do. And so they tell these people that, okay, we are accepted. All of Israel is accepted. We're going to back you up. We're going to help you. And uh, the people will be defeated. And the people were really, really defeated. So these people came and they said, okay, well, I've come. We'll do with us as you please and everything. And when they're about to. When your enemy will think that they've gotten you, you're in the trap, you've fallen, you're zero, then God is going to bring you back up. God is never late. He's always on time. So don't fear. Don't fret. My brother, my sister, don't be worked up. Don't be afraid because the God, God Almighty is there to accompany you. He's there to do mighty things for you. He's there to surprise your enemies, to wow your enemies. And so, yes, he's never late. He'll be there for you. He'll be there for you. You just have to trust him and hang in there. You just have to hold on some more and some more and not give up and not back out because God is ready to do and undo for your sakes. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He sure is. So, people, I don't know about you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what you're fighting with or you're worried about. But God is going to send you help. God is going to send help and help is going to be available for you just in time. Don't settle. Don't give in. Don't back out. Stay connected to the vine. As long as you're connected to the vine, you would bear fruit. There is no turning back. You will bear fruit. It's when you disconnect the, from the vine that you won't be able to bear fruit. But as long as you're connected to the vine, you will bear fruit, my, my sister. You will bear fruit, my brother. You would bear fruit. So it goes on and the people from Jabesh Gilead went on and they were very excited. They were very happy that Israel had said they were going to come and help them. And that was Saul. And so when Saul actually defeated those people, they said, okay, where are those people who said that Saul cannot do? There are some people that are saying that you cannot do this. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. In the end, when you do it, it's others that will want to fight that battle for you. They'll be like, where are those people that said princess could not do this one? Where are they? Mm -mm. It is God who 
gave victory. It's God who gives all these things. So let's just let them be. Let's just leave them. God has given us the victory anyways. So let's just let them be. And that's how it's going to happen. People are going to be shocked. And I love the fact that Saul directed them to God. He says, and Saul said, there shall not a man be put to death this day. For to the Lord had wrought salvation in Israel. He says it is God that gave them the victory. It's God that brought that salvation. It's not him. Because they were already looking at him like now the savior, you know, that kind of savior king, kind of. So he was telling them that all this thing that is happening in his life is God. And we're going to see how Saul ended up, you know. That's why I keep saying to you all that even if it's me, princess, as I'm talking to you right now, if I'm talking sense right now, I'm talking sense, I'm talking sense, I get to a place where I'm talking foolishness. Call me to other. If I don't listen, I get to a place where I'm talking things that don't tie with the Bible, that are not in the word of God. Call me to other. And if I don't listen, trash everything I say. Oh yeah, trash everything I say. I've said it time without numbers and I'll keep saying it again and again and again. It takes you listening consistently to nonsense to start believing nonsense. Oh yeah. It's not just a one-off thing. You're not just going to listen to it today and then automatically you just start believing it. If you're a child of God and you have the word of God in you, when something is coming that is not according to the word of God, your whole spirit being, your spirit man is going to reject it. It's going to be so, you would know. I don't know how to explain it, but I know what I'm saying. When you are a child of God, you will know. When something comes to you that is not godly, you would, you would feel in your entire being how your body, your system is rejecting it. Like that. It's like that. But if you don't even have the word of God in you, you will not know that this one is wrong or this one is not. But when you have the word of God, the word of God counters everything. Jesus, the, the devil was actually using by the word of God to Jesus. And Jesus was using by the word of God to counter him. So there can also be the word that would be to lure you astray. And there's also the word that would be to lead you to the light. Take your pick. If Jesus did not have the word of God, he would not be able to counter the devil's um, 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 temptation. And that's why some of us will fall all the time. Today, we, we come back, we repent, we cry out for mercy, and then boom, tomorrow again, we're back in the same thing. Today, we'll come back, we'll cry out for mercy, and boom, the next day, we're back in the same thing. God doesn't like that. I don't think you would even like it, you as a person. I don't think you would like that. So yes, people, that's it. I think that's basically it for today. When um, things happen in your life, you need to go back to God. God is the author and finisher of your faith. You don't need to have a fixed kind of way that you want your, your situation to be answered or to be addressed. When you go to God and you're asking for answers and you're asking for help, you should be open-minded so that God is going to show you who and where your help is going to come from. Not you deciding where you think your help should come from. And as such, Focusing on that place and then not getting the help and getting frustrated and, and feeling really annoyed or irritated. Meanwhile, God is showing you the place, but you're not seeing it because you have a premeditated or a preconceived way or method or strategy that you want to use. But you just want God to rubber stamp it. No, God doesn't do that. He shows you the way. He shows you how it's supposed to be done. So you need to go with an open heart and listen to God. Yep. That's exactly what is supposed to happen. So people, I'm really, really grateful. I'm really happy that you, a couple of you still came today, even though we came on earlier than normal. Um, tomorrow, we're going to go back to our normal time. I'm so sorry that um, this had to happen. And uh, please, you all should not forget to go to Grow with Katie, Katie K. And let's have a swell time celebrating with her. Have one year anniversary of our organization. She's helping people to grow financially, spiritually, and also personally. Self-development, financial development, and of course, giving voice to the voiceless. So, it's going to be celebration time all through this evening. It's going to be happening at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please, you guys should not fail to be there. 
it's in about three hours time we're hoping that you all are going to be present and ready and uh, we are going to head there and mass and do this together and celebrate with her says rejoice with those who are rejoicing mourn with those who mourn so when you rejoice with those who are rejoicing your own turn is just right around the corner i hope you all are going to join us and rejoice together god bless you all until tomorrow ciao ciao well i always get to say i love you so so very much but god loves you way way more get to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates each time we upload a new video we get to go live now we have our audio bible on tiktok on facebook and on youtube we're looking forward to getting it on instagram and we hope that you're going to be a part with us enjoying all the beautiful things that we're going to be putting out there on instagram and also all other social media platforms father thank you for your word we pray that this word is going to be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts we're going to be able to hear you and understand you clearly and be able to obey you speedily and promptly and totally because you're a faithful father Thank you, Lord God, because we know indeed you never fail. You never leave us nor forsake us. Come now and do in us that which only you can do and do for us that which only you can do. Guide and lead us and direct us even as we'll go for our new week that is starting tomorrow by your grace. If we get up strong and healthy, O oh Lord, we pray that the day and the week is going to be stupendously beautiful, blessed and blessed beyond our reasonable understanding. Thank you, Lord God. Give us the grace to go and conquer our world in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Tomorrow is another day. It's going to be 1 Samuel chapter 12. Please read ahead of time and come back here. Let's have a great moment together. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.